In games one and two, the Minnesota Timberwolves absolutely swarmed the Nuggets with their relentless defensive efforts, but in game three, Denver struck back. It's likely that coach Michael Malone wasn't totally caught off guard by the first two games of the series. The head coach of the Denver Nuggets learned firsthand about elite championship caliber defense from his late father, Brendan Malone, who had an extensive career in basketball and served as a longtime assistant coach for the Detroit Pistons. Brendan Malone was part of Chuck Daly's coaching staff during the Pistons championship victories in 1989 and 1990. More notably, Brendan Malone was the architect behind the Jordan Rules, the defensive strategy devised by the Pistons to limit Michael Jordan's impact in playoff games. Detroit's esteemed Hall of Fame guard Joe Dumars, renowned as one of the premier on-ball defenders of his era, employed every tactic to prevent Jordan from accessing his preferred scoring zones on the court, contesting his shots when he attempted jumpers. When Jordan would pass Dumars or other Detroit defenders with his dribble, they would channel him towards the paint, where a group of aggressive Pistons defenders awaited, featuring the likes of Bill Lambeer, Rick Mahorn, John Sally, and Dennis Rodman. They would swarm around Jordan, compelling him to shoot over their outstretched arms. If Jordan attempted to rise above them, one or more defenders would likely send him crashing to the floor. Throughout the duration of a six or seven game series, this overt physicality would gradually wear down Jordan. If he failed to receive offensive support from his teammates, the frustration between him and his Bulls companions would escalate. It took several years of postseason disappointment before Chicago ultimately overcame Detroit in 1991. Hence, Michael Malone is acutely aware of the psychological dynamics underlying the Minnesota Timberwolves performance against his reigning NBA champion Nuggets so far. In Denver, Minnesota not only clinched pivotal moments, but seized the lead in the series. The Timberwolves have not only secured victories, but also seemingly captured the essence of the Nuggets' confidence, reminiscent of how the Pistons utilized defensive prowess to undermine and unsettle opponents. During Game 2, Jaden McDaniels and Nikhil Alexander-Walker showcased their extensive wingspans, relentlessly pressuring Jamal Murray at midcourt with dynamic energy and precision, without drawing fouls. Their concern efforts led to a 24-second violation early in the second quarter, along with multiple defensive stops that were nothing short of dominant. In Game 1, Rudy Gobert's defensive presence in the paint was palpable. However, Gobert was absent in Game 2, but despite Gobert's absence, the Timberwolves seamlessly continued their defensive dominance, really in greater fashion, in Game 2. Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed, neither renowned for their defensive prowess before this season, diligently marked Jokic throughout the game, applying physical pressure, almost mirroring the Pistons' historic defensive first team. While the modern era is often criticized for foul baiting and free throw merchants, these playoffs have proved that the NBA still allows robust defensive play. But even with the allowed physical play, the playoffs have still been offensively electrifying. Featuring a collection of scoring performances from Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, Shea Gilgis Alexander, and more, Minnesota, along with Oklahoma City and Boston, have thrived in these playoffs, winning their initial six games through tenacious defense defense. The Timberwolves have totally outmaneuvered, outhustled, and outperformed the Nuggets, denying them their preferred spots on the court without resorting to over-physicality or fouling. Their defensive strategy is effective without being unsportsmanlike, simply causing discomfort for their opponents. Murray's calf injury restricts his mobility. However, he, along with the entire Nuggets team, thrive when opponents double-team Jokic. This strategy epitomizes Denver's identity, Jokic's exceptional playmaking skills, dissecting defenses with his comprehensive court vision. In Game 1, the Wolves positioned Gobert as a roaming defender off Denver's power forward, typically Aaron Gordon, allowing Gobert to provide rim protection. The strategic move proved pivotal in Minnesota's victory, as Gobert's freedom enabled him to intercept a lob from Jokic to Gordon, a crucial play with three minutes remaining, and the Wolves holding onto a five-point lead. Subsequently, the Wolves capitalized on the transition opportunity, with Edwards drawing a foul and converting two free throws. What could have been a three-point game was widened to a seven-point margin. Minnesota has maintained the league's top-ranked defense throughout the season. They surrendered the fewest points per game at 106.5 and led in opponents' effective field goal percentage at 51.5%. Minnesota holds the top spot in defensive rating at 109, 
boasting a lead over two full points ahead of second place Orlando. This marks the most significant gap between the top ranked and second ranked defense in this category in eight years. While implementing the Jordan rules is no longer feasible due to NBA regulations aimed at reducing physicality, Minnesota's relentless defensive approach, both in mindset and execution, is reminiscent of the championship winning Detroit teams. The Wolves have demonstrated their ability to thrive alongside the remarkable offensive talents prevalent in today's game. Now, while games 1 and 2 were dominant displays by the Wolves, game 4 was a different story. Not only were the Wolves being called for more fouls, but Denver was looking more like the team they've been all season, even more similar to the team they were last season. The Nuggets effectively slowed the game down while taking shots early in the shot clock. To begin the game, Jokic seemed timid, but the rest of the team was finding themselves with open opportunities and knocking down good looks. The Nuggets seemed to be cleverly using Jokic as a decoy, and as the Wolves were overcommitting to guarding the three-time MVP, Denver's ball movement was impeccable, and the score was growing. Jamal Murray made most of the single coverage, dominating the first half with 18 points, as the Minnesota fans were booing each time he touched the ball. By halftime, the Nuggets held a 15-point lead and were looking to make this a more competitive series. The Nuggets continued their dominance in the second half, completely blowing up the lead. Really, the Wolves in Game 3 looked a lot like the Nuggets in Game 2. Now, the series is a little more competitive. Denver still has a mountain to climb, and Minnesota still has championship aspirations. Who do you have coming out on top in the series? In how many games? Let us know in the comments and please subscribe. Thanks for watching Sports Pantheon.